far south of the Erd Tree in the lands between stands Stormvale Castle, the seat of power in Limgrave. In the current day of the game, it is ruled over by Godric the Grafted, last of the Golden Lineage, but that was not always the case. Stormvale Castle has been claimed by more than one lord over the ages, and the architecture reflects that history. In this video, I once again take my educational and professional background in architecture to explore the architecture of Elden Ring and what it can tell us about the lore and world of the Lands Between. This time, we will discuss the architectural melange that is Stormvale Castle. I highly recommend also watching my video about the story of Castle Morn and Romanesque architecture if you haven't, as this series of videos presents my ongoing analysis of how From Software uses architecture to add detail and depth to the world and story of Elden Ring. If this series sounds appealing to you, I would encourage you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to catch new Elden Ring videos as they drop. Before we get into Stormvale Castle in earnest, I would like to reiterate and add on to a conversation I started in my video about Castle Morn, which will come into play in a big way talking about Stormvale Castle. Real world architecture and fiction is a reference that provides the audience with a time and a place from which to pull from. A pertinent example of this is a medieval European castle, aka Romanesque architecture, even though the work may take place in another world, this architecture acts as a shorthand to effectively let the audience know that this work takes place during a time roughly equivalent to the Middle Ages in a place similar to medieval Europe. Architecture is especially effective at this because it embodies art, technology, and cultural values all at once. When we think of historical civilizations, it is often their most iconic architecture that springs to mind symbolizing when they were, what they accomplished, and what they valued. It's easy to see why historical architecture is used in fictional settings because it says so much so effectively. However, the degree and detail to which historical architecture is used obviously varies greatly. To bring up the Romanesque example again, it might be primarily as set dressing to indicate classical medieval architecture as a familiar touchstone in a broad sense. I'm going to use Castle Dower and Skyrim as an example. It is located in the City of Solitude, one of the major cities in the game, and serves as a fortress for Imperial forces and the residence of the Emperor in Skyrim. It is pretty generic Romanesque castle architecture with some Gothic windows, and it isn't meant to allude to a real-world location. All it needs to do is feel appropriate for the setting, and the battlements and towers convey that, but there isn't much more to read into it beyond being a medieval castle. We can contrast this with the city of Whiterun in Skyrim, which employs a Norwegian national romantic style of architecture called Dragastil to evoke Norway and Vikings as a means to give a real-world touchstone for the people of the region of Skyrim. This is not totally consistent, however, and Whiterun also features 16th century Elizabethan England, and 20th century Art Nouveau styles of architecture as well. In reality, none of these styles are medieval architecture, but the 20th century Dragosteel style is supposed to conjure thoughts of historical Norway and Vikings, so it serves the purpose of geographically tying Whiterun to Norway and Vikings, even if it's not technically a medieval style. The Elizabethan and Art Nouveau touches are just meant to look cool, because Skyrim is a fictional and fantastical world where artists are not beholden to strictly following real-world chronology and technology and can mix and match styles of architecture for purely aesthetic reasons. So we see how these two examples of architecture in Skyrim work broadly as touchstones to build the setting, but that considering the architectural choices and more details doesn't really work. The use of a romantic national style for Whiterun doesn't work if you consider its real-world chronology as a reactive style hearkening nostalgically and nationalistically back to an earlier age, and Castle Dower doesn't have enough geographically specific details to tie it to a place. However, whereas Skyrim tells most of its story and builds its world thoroughly through codices and dialogue, Elden Ring expresses a large chunk of its story and world through the environment and its details. This applies to From Software's other titles, 
but Elden Ring in particular is interested in the rise and fall of civilizations of the lands between, and a big way it expresses this is through the detailed use of historical architecture, art, and culture as touchstones. So when it comes to analyzing the architecture of Elden Ring, I look at the architecture used while considering its real-world, geographical, chronological, and cultural contexts, and weighing that against Elden Ring as a fictional and fantastical world that has the freedom to use these elements as it needs for the gameplay and story. I'll give my professional perspective and as complete of a picture as possible, and you can take the evidence and reach a conclusion that agrees and disagrees with me in a balance that makes sense to you. Let's get into it. First, I'd like to cover what we know about the history of Stormvale, so as to provide some context for our architectural investigation. We can piece together from a few item descriptions that before being defeated by Godfrey, first Elden Lord, Stormvale was held by the Stormlord and also home of the Stormhawk King. Stormhawk Dean's item description states that Dean faithfully rendered lifelong service to the old King of Stormvale long ago when the true storm raged. And that old king is the Stormhawk King, which is not only evident from his title, but also the Stormhawk King's ashes, which state, ashes of a hawk revered by all others as sovereign back in the days, when Stormvale's winds still raged like no other. The ancient monarch is proud, however, refusing to answer anyone's summons. And I want to clarify here that the Stormhawk King is king of the Stormhawks only, and is distinct from the Storm Lord. In last protagonist's video linked below, he explains that in the Japanese text, the Stormhawk King's ashes more clearly state that the Stormhawk King was revered as sovereign by all other hawks, whereas in English the translation says by all others, which while essentially the same, is a bit more ambiguous. I want to make this clarification because I want to make it clear that it was the Storm Lord who held and likely built Stormvale Castle, and seems to be a very natural ally with the Stormhawk King and his Stormhawks. As for evidence of the Stormlord holding Stormvale Castle, we can look toward the Banished Knights Oleg and Engval. In both of their item descriptions, they are called Wings of the Storm in English, and more explicitly called the Wings of the Stormlord in the Japanese text. Oleg and Engval were banished, likely after the Stormlord was defeated by Godfrey. Oleg went on to serve Morgoth the Grace Given and receive Erdtree Burial for his service, killing traitors. Engval rejected Morgoth's invitation, choosing to keep watch over a masterless castle, aka Stormvale, for many years, and he died as a hero of the fringes and was buried in the Murkwater catacombs. If you'll allow a slight tangent, I like the bit of Golden Order propaganda that I see implied by the story of these two knights. Oleg accepts service from the Order who slayed his lord and banished him going on to kill others labeled traitors by the Golden Order. Conversely, Engval rejects the summons of the Golden Order, keeping watch over his dead lord's castle, and is celebrated as a hero by the fringe folk, many of whom are probably labeled traitors by the Golden Order. And yet, it is Oleg who is buried in the fringe folk hero's grave and given an Erdtree burial by the Golden Order. I see this as the Golden Order rewriting history and portraying Oleg as a hero of the fringe folk for killing traitors, when in reality it was Engval who was lauded as a hero by the fringe folk for refusing their summons and watching over his dead lord's land. I just think it's neat. Getting back to Stormvale's history, we know explicitly that these banished knights served the Stormlord at Stormvale Castle. In present day Stormvale, we find quite a few other banished knights there who use the storm weapon skills that are described as being of Stormvale. This is ultimately supposition, but my perspective on this is that Oleg wasn't the only former knight of the Stormlord to go into service for the Golden Order, and that these knights either remained at Stormvale under the service of the Golden Lineage after the defeat of the Stormlord, or they returned under the service of Godric during the Shattering War. Now let's talk more about how and when Godfrey defeated the Stormlord. We are told by Godfrey's crown, the age of the Erd Tree began amongst conflict, when Godfrey was lord of the battlefield. He led the war against the giants, faced the Stormlord alone. 
Godfrey defeated the Stormlord as part of America's campaign across the lands between. This puts the creation of Stormvale Castle before the founding of the Golden Order. The Stormhawk King is referred to as Ancient in Stormhawk Dean's description. In the crest of Stormvale, a hawk is called Long Forgotten and Ancient in design. All of this leads me to believe that Stormvale's roots date back to before the Age of the Erd Tree, perhaps during the Order of the Dragons, where it was built by the mysterious Stormlord in a location where the storm raged hardest. The identity of the Stormlord remains a bit of a mystery to me, and it isn't critical to this video, but in last protagonist's video on the Stormlord, they offer up an interesting theory and I encourage you to check it out if you haven't. Either way, the key information for us is that Stormvale Castle was built long ago and held by the Stormlord until he was defeated by Godfrey during his conquest of the Lands Between. After Godfrey became tarnished and was exiled, I believe as Engval's description states that Stormvale Castle remained masterless for a time until the time of the Shattering War began. Kenneth Height in the Mimic's Veil vale item description explains that Godric fled the capital of Landell and took up residence in Stormvale Castle. And Stormvale would be like an ancestral home for Godric, as the ancient castle of the Golden Lineage taken by his ancestor Godfrey. And that brings us up to the current day, where Godric is holed up in Stormvale Castle, grafting the domain of Limgrave onto himself in his quest to become powerful. Now that we have context for Stormvale Castle, Let's talk about the architecture and how it reflects and enriches this history. Stormvale Castle contains within its walls Romanesque, Gothic, and likely Neo-Gothic styles of architecture. These styles reflect its original function as a practical defensive structure, but also its history as a place that has changed hands and become a more ostentatious symbol of power in the region. As discussed previously, before the Golden Lineage controlled the castle, it was home to the Stormlord and the Stormhawks. The exterior walls, and generally the exteriors of the buildings at the castle, are all relatively basic Romanesque style structures. There are exceptions to this rule, but I believe the exceptions in Stormvale do play into the history of the castle. This more classical Romanesque style of architecture is reflected in these pieces of concept art where Stormvale is depicted as a classical medieval European castle with its semicircular arches, thick stone walls with smaller openings, and a general lack of gothic spires. The interiors in the game and concept art are structurally a mix of Romanesque style spaces with semicircular arches and barrel vaults, as well as gothic style spaces with pointed arches and ribbed vaults. From what I can tell, this mix comes down to the implied function of the spaces, where these secondary rooms are depicted in a simpler Romanesque style, and the Great Hall, for example, is more of a more ornate Gothic style. In all of these spaces shown in the concept art, there is depicted a lot of hawk imagery in the sculptures and banners, connecting these spaces to the Stormlord and the Storm Hawks. However, there is an evolution in the concept art. We see this piece of the Great Hall receive Godfrey's large portrait, and we see drawn over the walls of the castle, the ornate golden ornamentation and beast banners. I believe the concept art is depicting the history of Stormvale being taken from the Stormlord and captured by Godfrey, and the changes that occurred to the castle in the hands, the many many hands, of the Golden Lineage. The theme of legacy and how civilizations and generations build on the previous is a huge theme in the game, and this won't be the last time we see from Evoke This using architecture. All the same, could this evolution in concept art perhaps be the case of the iterative nature of game development? Of course, but even if that is the case, it does not change the fact that there is a resonance between the creative process and the narrative framing the art produced. Which is my way of avoiding the phrase, art imitates life, but then I said it anyways, damn. This clash between the functional simplicity of the classic Romanesque castle design and this improbable and fantastical ornamentation transforms the look of the castle from a functional fortification to an ostentatious symbol of power and wealth. A fellow member of the community, Aonwe, 
during the course of their own architectural investigation in Elden Ring, asked me how I would classify this ornamentation. And my answer is Neo-Gothic. Let me explain. Neo-Gothic is Gothic architecture divorced from the limitations, functions, and time period of real Gothic architecture. This design is fantastical. It would either be impossible or extremely impractical to actually create in reality. It's like stone tracery in the form of pointed arches and spires, except instead of framing a window, it's put on the battlement like a bird deterrent. In addition, the design is also a fantasy. It serves no function except as a symbol of wealth and power, which historically tracks. As castles became outmoded and high gothic architecture rose to prominence, they turned into status symbols of wealth and power in Europe that eschewed practicality for ornamentation through sculpture and openings. However, this is another aspect of neo-gothic architecture that I think fits well here, and that ties into a little theory I have. I think it is Godric that added this ornamentation to Stormvale Castle. Neo-Gothic architecture is rooted in nostalgia for a past that never truly existed. Neo-Gothic in particular stemmed from religious fears in the 19th century, that people weren't religious enough anymore and that they needed to go back to that bygone era. So they styled buildings as if they were Gothic, using modern methods of construction that ignored the limitations and functions of the style. Godric the Grafted is the last of the Golden Lineage. He is desperate for the approval of his forefathers, and he harvests the limbs of the locals and any tarnished who wander in as he means to be powerful like his ancestor Godfrey. I talk about it more in my video about Godric, but that's the basics of his character. Sure, this ornamentation could have been added by Godfrey or someone further down the Golden Lineage as a symbol of power, but the aggressively impractical and unfunctional design lines up with Godric's character so well. And I say that from a place of love. Godric is made up of a lot of things, but subtlety is not one of them. Next, there is this church, which is pretty textbook gothic with the spires, stained glass, pointed arches, and an abundance of sculptures in the form of America. There is this triangular pediment, which is actually a bit Romanesque. Either way, the church sticks out, which I think suggests it may have been built later, but wait, uh, hold on. Who cares about this boring church when there is this? This big ass rotunda. This big ass rotunda is really interesting. Not only is a rotunda just generally striking with its circular plan, but this one in particular has a number of features that set it apart from the other architecture in Stormvale. Before we get into detail on the unique features of this building, I want to quickly address a rather large feature this tree relief. On my previous video I briefly mentioned this relief featured also at Castle Mord, and I had a number of comments state that this relief is of the Great Tree. To my knowledge this was first suggested in this Tarnished Archaeologist video linked below, and I revisited it to hear what they had to say. I think there's some intriguing points made, and overall it fits into the thesis of the video, but I don't think I am comfortable with confidently stating that this is the great tree depicted. For one, the tree and beast surcoat, worn by Godric's soldiers, depict a very similar design on their surcoat. The description states, Armor worn by soldiers loyal to Godric the Grafted. The surcoat depicts the distant Erd tree and the beast regent, an emblem of the golden lineage. Both are symbols of glory now past. The Mimic's Veil tells us that Godric fled Landell, capital of the Lands Between. After you defeat Godric, his dying words to his forefathers are, I am the Lord of all that is golden, and one day we'll return together to our home, bathed in rays of gold. He escaped to his family's castle of Stormvale, but his home is Landell. Limgrave is in the fringes, distant from the Erdtree capital, and his soldiers wear the Erdtree on their surcoat because he has given himself the title of Lord of All That Is Golden and hopes to return to Landell as Lord one day. 
The other reason the surcoat bears the symbol of the tree is probably because the soldiers of Landell wear the Erdtree surcoat, depicting another similar design, and Godric has adopted it as part of his coat of arms to further project legitimacy to his claim as Lord of all that is golden. The description says, Armor worn by soldiers sworn to defend the royal capital of Landell, the surcoat bears a majestic likeness of the Erdtree, its golden backing is an honor bestowed on no other soldiers. So with all of this in mind, my stance is that this relief is likely depicting the Erd Tree, because there is text related to similar designs that concretely state that this is the Erd Tree being depicted. However, I'm not going to say that this is definitively the Erd Tree or that it is always what this relief is depicting. I say this because I'm going to offer up a couple theories about the Rotunda, and in both theories, the identity of the tree depicted I treat as secondary to more primary or definitive evidence. The style of this building is predominantly Romanesque. The structure features these gigantic pilasters with composite style capitals not seen elsewhere within Stormvale. It features semicircular arches at doorways and openings. The main entrance features a triangular pediment design similar to many featured at Irish Romanesque churches. This design is also not featured elsewhere in Stormvale except for at the church briefly mentioned at the start of this chapter. This entryway to the rotunda then goes quite deep before reaching the door, implying very thick walls. The doorway itself has a semicircular arch. In the tympanum, the semicircular element between the doorway and the arch is a relief featuring Merica bestowing blessings in a similar pose as shown on the Erd Tree's favor talisman. So what does all of this add up to? In a general sense, this building feels like one of the more Roman-inspired Romanesque buildings that we've seen so far. The circular plan of the rotunda was featured more often in Roman architecture and was later used by Romanesque and Renaissance architecture as inspiration. Roman architecture features what is perhaps the most iconic rotunda, the Pantheon, and may likely be what inspired a number of round churches at the tail end of the Romanesque style dominating the continent. The triangular pediment at the entrance is another element that is more directly derivative of the Roman and Greek temple pediments, and was inspiration for the triangular pediment designs found at Irish Romanesque churches as previously mentioned. My first theory is that this was built as a place of worship during the time of the Stormlord, and that its unique elements and design reflect the sacred nature of this building. When Godfrey conquered Stormvale, it was established as his throne room, and the church within Stormvale was built as the new place of worship for America, and this building was renovated to reflect America's reign. I think this theory mostly applies to those who believe strongly that the tree relief needs to be the great tree, or those skeptical of the Golden Lineage making major changes to Stormvale. However, my second theory is that this structure was built by Godfrey or the Golden Lineage after taking hold of Stormvale. This theory is more compelling to me and brings everything together in a way that seems more satisfying. That explains why the design is different from the majority of Stormvale, except for the similar doorway to the church, which to me strengthens the notion that they were built at the same time by the Golden Lineage. The more Roman-derived nature of this building then ties in with the Roman architecture of Landell, specifically America's bedchamber, a building specifically inspired by the Roman pantheon. This ties in with the America imagery featured on the doorway, and of course Godfrey's statue inside. And yes, in this scenario I'd say the trees shown are depicting the Erd tree, their scale and prominence making it clear who holds this castle. This building, serving as the throne room, then acts as a stamp of conquest and a show of power, installing this towering representation of the Erdtree capital all the way out in the fringes of Limgrave. Of course, these are both theories, and you are free to decide which theory feels right to you, but I am compelled to say that Godfrey and the Golden Lineage built this rotunda after conquering Stormvale as a display of power and conquest. Rounding out this video is a topic not so much about the architecture, but what the heck happened to the architecture. Initially, I thought that the damage and ruins around Stormvale were the result of battles during the Shattering. Kenneth Height states about Godric 
First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. So while these marks could be scuffles from the shattering, I have heard a more compelling explanation that lines up nicely with a few details I noticed while investigating Stormvale Castle for this video. And the theory is that the damage to Stormvale comes from Godwin's corpse underneath Stormvale, spreading thorns and corruption. I discovered this theory in this video by Cosmos, linked below. You can check out Cosmos' video for full details, but the central argument lies in the item description of the marred wooden shield. Wooden shield of Stormvale soldiers, much like the castle, it is marred by modeling and thorns. Some say it is the curse of grafting which causes such affliction, while others talk of its root being something altogether more sinister hidden deep within the castle. This item goes a long way to spell this out, and the modeling on the shield and thorns look very similar to some of the marks seen on Stormvale. And I just think it clicks when you survey the damage and consider it to be the result of being torn apart from the inside, rather than the damage from a dragon, gravity magic, or siege weapon. I'm not going to dig into why exactly this is happening beyond noting that Godwin is of course of the Golden Lineage, and various theories have been built on why his corpse might return here. What I am interested in noting is the extent of the damage and how it transformed Stormvale. Another detail noted in Cosmos' video are these staples in the ground where the cobblestones are splitting. These are called concrete staples, and the reason they may not be working too well here is that, as you might have guessed, they're intended for concrete slabs, not cobblestones and masonry pavers. But hey, when your castle is coming apart at the seams, you make do with what you have. And Stormvale really is coming apart at the seams. Multiple towers have come apart, the outer wall looks like Swiss cheese, but something I didn't connect until looking at Stormvale this time is how much damage the old Prince of Death did to the ground. Initially, I thought this fissure along the ground leading up to Godwin was maybe a moat or a sewer, but a moat makes no sense because it's not continuous along the outer wall, there were multiple connections spanning it, and there was no need for a moat along a wall that's on top of a cliff overlooking the ocean. As for a sewer system, I think there very well could have been one here, but that it wasn't the open air deal it is today. I think that once upon a time there was ground here, but that it collapsed as Godwin made his way underneath the earth as his roots spread out. Further evidence of it being a collapse are the ruins haphazardly laying at the bottom, as well as the general jaggedness of this path, suggesting that this fissure wasn't engineered by man. I believe this also explains the state of Godric's arena, which appears to functionally be a graveyard outside of the sacred rotunda. The jagged shapes of the cliffs again suggest that this wasn't by design, and the proximity of the gravestones and trees to the edge of the cliffs on either side imply to me that at one point the ground continued. Godric's arena is heavily marred by Godwin's blight on all sides, and I could imagine how such a disruptive underground activity could cause a collapse here. This realization about the collapsed ground is all well and good, but does it answer a question I have had about Stormvale for a long time? One that keeps me up at night, longing to have an answer, and with it, peace of mind? Why are there flying buttresses here, and more broadly, what is this space? This space consists of three sets of flying buttresses, the only three in the castle, with some roofing over the top, which then acts as some kind of cover for the space below consisting of three archways and walls, accessed by a stair with dubious head clearance during the time when the buttresses were unbroken. This function or reason for building this space is beyond me. In lieu of having an answer, I assumed FromSoft thought it would be fun to traverse a few buttresses, as you do. Does understanding this place as an area where the ground collapsed shed any light? I considered the idea that the buttresses were being used to brace the outer wall, given the direction they slope and where they terminate. However, that seems like an odd solution, especially considering that flying buttresses were designed to support thinner gothic walls pushing outward, not incredibly thick romanesque castle walls. And if anything, the church right across the fissure could use some support. The collapsed ground has put it precariously close to oblivion. You would also think that if they were bracing the structures around the fissure, 
that this would be seen in more areas than just the three flying buttresses we find here. So I can't explain the presence of the buttresses here, but in a more general sense, I think I can explain this ramshackle space. After the ground collapsed, people wanted to investigate, but there was no natural path down. So they split into two teams. One team made the longest ladder known to man, and the other team used some ruined roofing and wood from the collapse to put together an improvised path down to Godwin. This goes badly for everyone who tries this, and you find an abundance of corpses down here as proof. Still doesn't give the flying buttresses a satisfactory explanation, but even from software is not above putting something in just because. And there you have it, the history of Stormvale Castle and how the architecture reflects and enriches its history. It's a place shaped by the forces that inhabit it, and subtle and not so subtle changes made in the architecture reflect that. Even the destruction helps build the story, and the creeping destruction and precarious nature of many spaces give the sense that we arrive at this place just before the castle fully falls to ruin. The fallen leaves tell a story, but so do the fallen ruins of Stormvale Castle. If you enjoy Elden Ring content, please subscribe to the channel. I have a healthy backlog of videos to check out, as well as many more to come as I continue to dive into the lands between. Thanks for watching.